Hi guys, this is Magnus Kogsfjord with a tutorial on how to create welds in Keyshot. Now we'll be, we will be using parametric CAD data for this, so the technique should work on whatever engineering or design CAD software you're used to, as long as you can generate the needed geometry. Just as a little heads up before we start that I've prepared a few freebie textures for all of you following me here, along with the key shot scene and geometry used in this tutorial. So you can head over to Gumroad in the following link to download the content and study this for yourselves. And feel free to donate if you're feeling generous, but I won't judge or hold anything against you if you just want to download and start making your own awesome welds. Now before we get started on the fun part, I have to emphasize the importance of preparing your CAD data for the purpose of local UV mapping. Now this is not the same UV mapping in the sense where you would unwrap your geometry to paint on your UV map as maybe many of you have seen polygon modelers do, but it's rather a means to utilize how surfaces flow along a local UV coordinate in your parametric software. And the understanding of this is going to be crucial to achieve the correct mapping technique. That is why I've decided to first cover the slightly more boring theory about UV in parametric context before moving on to the actual welding. The tutorial also takes into account that you're somehow familiar with basic modeling and key shot features like the material graph and basic texturing. Now I will be using NX for the CAD basis, but as I mentioned, I don't see why this technique wouldn't work in other similar softwares as well, as long as you're able to create the needed geometry. So just shoot a comment below if you find it applicable for other CAD software, as I would be interested to know if it does or not. So to start off, we're going to take a look at UV coordinates and what it means in terms in a parametric context. Now every freeform surface in your CAD tool is made out of NURBS or non-uniform rational B-splines. And that would be these control points you see right here, which is the actual mathematics that describes our shape. I can, for instance, directly access these poles by using the tool XForm to shape it if I so desire. However, the surface itself is actually represented in the modeling environment as polygons and they are crucial to our visual understanding of the shapes that the NURBS represent. You can actually draw a comparison between NURBS versus polygons to vector graphics versus pixelated graphics. For example, in 2D, the vectorized graphics provide you with unlimited resolution. Like if you've ever seen a PDF with a font, you can zoom in as much as you want and the font resolution will just keep updating and keep crisp. Now pixelated graphics however, like JPEGs or PNGs, are a fixed number of squares or pixels that makes up your resolution. And the higher the pixel count, the higher the resolution. So if you zoom in on the same letters uh, when looking at a JPEG or a PNG, you can at one point clearly see the pixel that it's made out of. In 3D things work a bit similarly. Parametric surfaces provide you with an unlimited access to polygon resolution, which is what we can see right here. Now I'm using a tool here called Show Poles that allows me to look at the NURBS directly to see how it flows. If I turn off the poles and enable the Show Facets, I can see how the polygons are distributed to make up my surface. Now if I want a high resolution on this NURBS surface, all I have to do is zoom in and click Update Display and it just automatically gives you more polygons. However, on the right side here, I have copied the shape and converted it into a facet body. This means that there are no NURBS here that controls its surface, but a fixed number of polygons. So if I zoom in on this guy and do the same, nothing happens. So in order to increase the resolution for this guy, I would have to use some reverse engineering tools and actively subdivide the surface. Now in terms of texturing, having a NURBS surface such as the left one here gives us an opportunity to map along the NURBS flow. So let's just bring this guy into Keyshot and have a look at how we can utilize it. So I have my NURBS surface to the left here and a faceted body to the right. So let's open up our material graph and let's add a brushed material to it. and we'll connect that to the color node. 
Now the default mapping technique is typically set to box. Let's change that to UV. Immediately, we'll see how the brush texture follows the shape. Now if I try to copy that material over to the faceted body, however, nothing happens. That is because it has no UVs to map along. So in order to do the same with a polygon model, it would have to be unwrapped in a polygon modeling tool and painted accordingly. Now let's look at these weird looking tubes I got here next. Now these are exactly the same geometry in terms of surface area, curvature, continuity and volume. The only difference is that I've used a swept feature to model the left and a tube feature for the right. Now the swept feature is smooth all the way around and only consists of one surface, while the tube feature has gotten transitions at the same areas where the curves are attached to each other. Now if you look at the NURBS for each geometry, the swept one consists of one smooth flowing NURBS grid, while our tube feature is patched up with multiple NURBS grids. So let's see what happens when we bring this into Keyshot. Now if we, as previously, add brushed materials to these two guys, we can see that our swept feature has nice continuously flowing textures. Well, when we look at our patch tube feature, it jumps from one position to the other and it's hard to control. So let's say we wanted to add a weld bump to this and let's try on our tube geometry first. And I'm going to bring in my normal map. Change it to UV and just click B to get a preview of the bump on our geometry. And let's change the UV angle to 90 and increase the size a little bit. Now this seems okay in the isolated surfaces on the tube, but as you can see, as it consists of multiple NURBS grids, we don't have any control of how the texture behaves from one surface to the next. So let me just copy that material to the other part. Increase the size a bit. And see that we have a continuous smooth flowing texture without any unwanted jumps or irrationalities. And that is why it's so important when doing parametric UVing that we're only dealing with a singular surface. And that is why it's going to demand a bit more from you on the modeling side rather than the texturing side. So to the fun part, let's start actually adding some welds to model. So let's have a look at these two guys where I've just extruded a sketch a few times and put a couple of edge blends in between them. Now if we compare the two, there might not seem to be much difference, but if you look closely, you can see that on the left side, we have a regular edge blend where the faces are divided where you would expect. But at the right side, I have reconstructed the edge blend such that they're only left with one surface per blend. And this is the key to get those weld flowing seamlessly. However, I'm going to reconstruct the lower edge blend here just to give you some heads up on how I do this. So let's first use uh, a synchronous tool called delete face and remove that and open up our tool section surface fillet bridge. So let's bridge this section to this. And we're gonna inherit that shape with that. And before we confirm the tool, we are going to have to look at our poles. 
Now, as you can see, the nerves are twisting a little bit here and that will give us actually a twisted look on our texture. So we want our nerves to flow with the perpendicular flow to our sections. And we can achieve that by adding a spine curve. So I'm going to select spine curve in our dialog here and select the lower section as our spine. So now you might have noticed that our nerves are perfectly aligned and have a perpendicular flow to our sections. So if you look at the same model in Keyshot, uh, let's look at the first one here, which is the weld on the edge blend phase. It goes pretty well along for a while, but then it just suddenly disappears when, when it reaches the transition. That, has, that is, as I mentioned with the tube feature earlier, that the coordinates are oriented completely different on the new phase, and it would change both the direction and the position at the transition. Now looking at the part with only one surface as the blend, I'm utilizing the UV flow of the singular surface. So let's add another weld to the lower blend here to see how it's done. Now since this blend material is the same as the surrounding material, I could experience the weld showing up all over the place since it's taking the local UVs of every face in the same material. That is why we have to unlink the material from the edge blend before adding the weld. And since I've done a proper preparation job in NX, I can right click the blend material and select unlink material. This will preserve the original material, but allow me to tweak it without affecting the surrounding material. I then find my desired texture from the texture weld pack and start adding them. I also duplicate my base material to add it as a label. Now sometimes the little plus sign goes missing in my material graph for some reason, but you should be able to add it anyway by releasing the node just below the opacity channel. I like to start with the color, select UV and start positioning it. And let's add a little roughness in there as well as our bump map. Now it seems okay here, but I want the weld bump to reach a bit closer to the edge without affecting the color and roughness map. So I'm going to uncheck the sync option in our normal map that allows me to independently tweak this guy without affecting the others. And to wrap it up, I'm going to bring in our normal map as well and use a bump add node to bring them together. First, I'll just snap the new normal map into the bump channel, which automatically gives it the correct size relative to the color and roughness map since we have sync checked on the new bump map. I then gather both of our bump maps in the bump add node and put both of them to the bump node in our material. So that pretty much concludes my quick little introduction on UV and welding in Keyshot. In the Gumroad pack, you'll find four different weld textures, including three metals with oxidation effect and a simple painted version. 
I'm also attaching a couple of Keyshot 7 KSPs for you to study the setup by yourself if you so desire. And don't forget to subscribe to my channels or shoot me a comment if you have any question.